So iOS 18 is finally here and Apple have introduced a bunch of new features but it can be quite difficult knowing which features are actually useful and worth trying out. So in this video I'll be going over 17 new features that you need to know about. I'll be starting off with the basics and we'll be getting more and more advanced as the video progresses. Before we begin I wanted to quickly mention that I have recently started a monthly email newsletter where I share interesting stories and experiences that you won't find elsewhere. If that sounds interesting, I'll leave a link to it in the description below. Let's get into the video. So first up, we have a feature that I've been wanting since 2017. If you press and hold onto the lock screen and head into customize, we can now change the shortcut buttons at the bottom of our iPhone's lock screen. We have a bunch of new shortcuts to choose from, including running actual Siri shortcuts, and opening up specific apps like ChatGPT, for example. Heading into the home screen, we also have some new customization options. If you press and hold onto the screen, hit the edit button in the top left, and then press customize, you'll be presented with a number of new ways you can customize your iPhone's home screen. You can choose to enlarge all of the app icons and widgets at the top here, which will also remove the text beneath them. You can choose to darken the app icons or add a tint to the colors and you even get access to an eyedropper, so you can match the app icons to the color of this wallpaper, for example, which you can find linked in the description below. One thing to note with the app tinting though, is that not all of the apps will adjust in the exact same way. So some icons like the ones from Amazon and Pages just get slightly darker, but the actual colors themselves don't change, which can make your home screen look a bit inconsistent. I think it would have been nice if we could also remove the app names without having to enlarge the icons. You can now move and arrange apps wherever you like on the home screen, so we can have gaps between our apps and customize the icon arrangement to our liking. I can see this being especially beneficial if you're using a larger Pro Max or plus size iPhone model, because you can now place all of the important apps at the bottom of your screen and keep the top part empty. Widgets have also gotten a slight change, you can now resize them directly from the home screen instead of having to delete them and launching the larger version. And you can convert app icons directly into widgets from the home screen. Inside of Control Center, there's also been a slight redesign. The icons are now rounded and more circular compared to before. But if we press and hold onto the screen, we now have the option of changing the sizes of our controls. So for example, we can drag out this music control to get a full music player inside of Control Center. And you'll see our other controls have been pushed out into another page, which we can scroll between. If we tap on this plus icon at the bottom, we can now add in controls directly from Control Center itself. And we have a lot more controls to choose from compared to before. So for example, you can open up apps that you use on a frequent basis, effectively turning this into another home page. And you can even run other Siri shortcuts like creating new reminders or calendar events directly from Control Center. Speaking of the calendar, you can now view time sensitive reminders inside of the calendar app. So you can see here that I have this reminder to like this video set for tomorrow. And if I go into my calendar, you can see that I've got that exact same reminder in my schedule. And I can also see each of my calendar events in the monthly view. So it sort of looks more like Google Calendar. Whereas before, it would just show you the dates on the screen. You can also lock apps using Face ID now. So let's say I had some important documents inside of the Files app that I didn't want other people using my phone to have access to. I can have it so that anytime I go into Files, I have to authenticate it using Face ID. And you can take it a step further by also hiding the apps themselves. So the app won't be visible on the home screen or when you search for it. But if you scroll to the app library, at the bottom, you have a new section for all of your hidden apps, which are locked behind Face ID. So now your partner no longer has to know about your secret Tinder profile. The only thing to note here is that if the Face ID authentication fails, somebody can still break into your locked apps using your iPhone's passcode. So if you're at a bar and a stranger sees you entering in your passcode, they technically still will be able to break into all of your important apps if they get access to your phone. So I am hoping that Apple will eventually allow us to set custom passwords for each app in a future update. Speaking of passwords, we now have a dedicated passwords app on the iPhone. Essentially, this app is just taking the passcodes menu 
that was previously hidden inside of the settings app and making it its own dedicated app where you can view all of the passwords you have saved on iCloud Keychain. And yeah, it's a really simple layout. You've also got separate sections for your Wi-Fi passwords, along with any passwords you've shared with other people. And a cool trick you can do is if you head into your Wi-Fi passwords, you can generate a QR code that other people can scan to immediately log into your Wi-Fi network. So rather than having to mess around with sharing passwords whenever you have guests come over, you can just show them this QR code, which is pretty neat. Again, the main limitation of this app right now is that you can't set a custom password to lock it. So if a stranger has access to your phone's password and steals your iPhone, they could potentially gain access to all of your important passwords all inside of one app, which is quite risky. And as of right now, the passwords app doesn't store credit card details inside of it. Those are still tucked away in the settings app inside of Safari. Speaking of Safari, we have some new changes to the way you navigate content on the web. So if you tap on this window icon in the search bar, we can now adjust the size of the text to make it bigger or smaller. And we can now search for keywords inside of web pages, basically like Command F on the Mac. And there's this new feature that lets you hide distracting items. So if there was an annoying advertisement that you wanted to hide on a website, you could just tap on that ad and choose to automatically hide it. And Safari will remember this change every time you come back into that website. And you can go pretty extreme with this feature, basically getting rid of everything on the web page if you wanted to. Thankfully, there is an option to undo everything in case you later need it. Inside of messages, we can now react to messages using standard emojis, and we can finally send scheduled texts to other people, which is another feature Android users have had for centuries. You can now view stopwatches and control them inside of the dynamic island. These also have live activities for them on the lock screen too. Inside of the podcast app, supported podcast episodes will now let you view chapters when scrolling through the play bar, similar to how YouTube does it. And in the music app, you can now add songs directly to a queue instead of them playing next. Another long overdue feature, inside of the camera app, you can now pause videos whilst recording. Finally, we have Apple Intelligence, which is Apple's set of AI features for the iPhone. I've left this bit till last because this actually won't be available until iOS 18.1 releases in October. And even when it releases, it will still be in beta and it will only be available in US English on the iPhone 15 Pros and the 16 series. So if you have a regular iPhone 15 or an iPhone 14 Pro, or any iPhone model before that, you unfortunately won't have access to any of these features. First up, Siri has gotten a new redesign with this new halo effect to make it look a bit less invasive. It's meant to support more natural language processing so it can better understand when you make mistakes during speech. You can also type directly to Siri just by double tapping at the bottom of your screen. So if you were in a crowded room and you didn't want to have to awkwardly speak directly to Siri, you now have another way of doing that. With writing tools, you can change the tone of text just by highlighting a piece of text and tapping writing tools. This will open up a brand new interface with options to proofread the text for grammar mistakes, rewrite it in a more professional or concise or colloquial tone, and also to provide summaries. When it comes to viewing notifications and emails, you can now preview summaries of your messages without having to open them up. It's a bit of a hit or miss if the summaries are accurate. I've seen some emails and messages summarize really well, but for others, they've been completely butchered. Inside of the Photos app, there's a new retouch tool that allows you to quickly clean up and erase distractions inside of photos. It's not quite advanced enough to remove actual people, but stuff like small objects or distracting items in the background can now be taken out. I can see this being especially beneficial if you post a lot of content online, because you can use this tool to blur out other people's faces in the background and respect their privacy. Of course, there will be more Apple intelligence features like visual intelligence rolling out over the next couple of months. But so far, I haven't really found Apple intelligence to be much of a game changer for me personally. So if you're on an older iPhone, you're not really missing out on much. So those were some of the main highlight features from iOS 18 this year. 
If you'd like to see my video covering what's new inside of iPadOS 18, then you can watch that video by clicking somewhere here. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to follow me on Instagram and Twitter and subscribe for the next one.